Top 6 Steps to Optimize Your Data Model in Power BI Hi, I'm M. Asif Hussain from Nohab Academy. What are we going to learn in this video? We are going to see what are the top 6 steps that will help you to optimize your data model in Power BI. So before directly starting into the topic, let me just ask a simple question to you all. So what is the step that we initially do when we are about to start a work in Power BI? So we try to extract the data or we try to you know get the data into Power BI. So once we get the data into Power BI, then my question here is that what is the type of connectivity mode that we use it? So there are three types of connectivity modes that we generally know. We have import mode, we have direct query mode and we have live connectivity mode. So now when I would like to talk to you about these two types of connectivity modes, import mode and direct query mode. So this is the first step import mode and direct query mode. So when we are having some uh, 10 billions or 100 millions of rows and columns, then it is very difficult to use import data as there is a size limit for it. So what we generally do, we go and use this direct query mode. So when we are using this direct query mode, so we cannot import the data into our Power BI desktop. Am I right? So when we compare the performance, when we have this direct query mode to the import mode, Direct query mode is little bit slower and the import mode is bit faster when compared to the direct query mode. So when we are having this import mode data, then we can physically see the data in our Power BI desktop and we can perform the calculations and DAX functions very easily, right? But here again comes to the point if you can able to uh, enable the schedule refreshes okay one or two you can do it if you would like if you cannot able to do multiple refreshes for the data that you are using in import mode but yeah obviously we have to go and use the direct query mode there that's a second option but if you are having huge uh, size limit of your data it is very optional that you know we don't have anything we have to go with the direct query mode so here the point is that to optimize the data model properly if we try to uh, improve it, the performance of the data model, then it is better to opt for import mode rather than going with a direct query mode because it takes some little bit time and it is when slower when compared to the import mode. So this is the first step. Now, if I talk to you about the second important step to optimize your data model in Power BI, it is the deleting the unwanted information. So when I'm talking about the unwanted information, what information I'm talking about? So deleting the unwanted columns and unwanted tables or unused columns or unused tables. So why should we do that? So whenever we are getting any data from a client or customer, it is very obvious that they are going to give us the raw data. Am I right? They are going to give us the raw data. Now, when we are getting the raw data from the client or customer, then there are multiple tables, there are multiple rows, there are multiple columns that are not relevant to the data that we have to prepare a report upon. Okay. So there are some columns which are not at all useful for a Power BI developer to include that in a Power BI report or dashboard. So for that, what we have to do, we have to delete those unused rows and unused, you know, unused columns and unused tables. So for example, there are some, uh, there is one Excel sheet that I have received as a data source format. And in that Excel sheet, I have some 10 to 15 tables, but I want to choose only five important tables, which are relevant for me to create a Power BI report or dashboard. All right. So here, so one important thing is that how should you see that? How should you look into it? Which particular columns I am using? Which particular tables I am using? Out of how many columns, how many columns I am really util utilizing in order to prepare a DAX model or in order to prepare a Power BI report or dashboard. So for that, if we, if I try to show it to you, okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We have six tables here. Am I right? So out of these six tables, if you see, okay, so I might use only one or two from this, or I might use only three or four from this. Okay. If I take only one particular table called orders here. So if I go to this external tools and if I use my Bravo, then it is easily telling me one of the external tools is Bravo. So it is easily telling me. So out of 127 columns, okay, one or two of which are not referenced with the model, okay, out of 127, one or two, I'm not using it, right? So of which are not referenced with the model at all, as even you can see here that it is even giving me, so, so data, so in this data, 
so what is the cardinality how much size it is it is 1.81 mb okay how much weight we have everything i am getting it from this information all right so we have multiple columns and we have everything it here so now using this bravo we can easily understand that what is the size of my particular data what is the how many number of columns i have and how many am i not really using it from these many columns that i existing in my particular table okay so this is one uh, this is a second step that we have to consider whichever or not required yes using a power query editor yeah you can happily remove it you can happily remove those particular columns which are not required okay so but we have to also make sure that those particular columns whichever i am removing should not be linked up with the subsequent columns or else the data in the another column will also be removed from that so that is the one thing that we have to understand okay so this is the second step when i talk to you about the third step i have just now spoken about the removing columns and removing tables but now i would like to talk to you about removing the unwanted rows deleting the unwanted rows for example in this same particular table if i would like to talk to you then let me go to transform data and in this transform data let me show you how many number of rows i really have in my particular query okay so if i take the uh, you know orders or if i take the table called query called data here i have 999 plus rows okay so it is showing me you know top 1000 rows so if i would like to see what is the count of my rows then if i see my count of rows then i have 60919 rows 60919 rows so i am really using all these 60919 rows so if you feel that you are you not using these many rows yes it is very obvious that you can remove those rows which you are not using it as part of your data model so here how to remove those particular rows yes happily you can come back and here what you can do is that you can see which particular rows you would like to remove either you would like to remove the alternate rows either you would like to remove the duplicate rows so most probably 60% of the people what they generally do is they directly remove the duplicate rows so when we are removing the duplicate rows directly we should also make sure that we have to be perfect and confident that the whichever rows i am removing should not get affected with my particular you know original data that i have received from the client or customer that we have to understand okay so this is the third step that we have to uh, keep it on as a focus as a part of a data model in power bi now if i like to talk about the fourth is the step that we have is we need to turn off the automatic data time so where where is that particular automatic data time that we have it here is if i come to file and if i go to options and settings i'll go to options and in this options we have something called as data load if you see here the data load time intelligence auto date or time auto date or time so if i would like to show it if i would like to show it here in the date in here in the orders table that i have i have order date in every table that we consider the auto date okay what are what's happening is that under this order date we have some date hierarchy where we have year quarter month or day okay so uh, here if i am uh, using this date hierarchy and again i am drilling down then i am able to see this year quarter month or day but if you use the dax studio yeah we can directly see the year quarter month or date is directly showing it but the advantage here is that if we try to turn off okay if we try to turn off this auto date or time that i have shown it to you in the options then it will be very easier for us to directly choose the date column information whenever we are working on any particular you know, visual so it is better to turn off the date or time option that we have it under data load in this options so just let's click on okay once you turn off this auto date or time the fifth very important step is choosing the right data type this is very important very very important my dear viewers data type okay so when we are getting the data into our power bi desktop if we directly transform the data where we open up our power query editor by default by the in the by default we are going to get the data type of each column as you can see here in the power query editor okay i am getting i am getting the data types okay it is a text data type i am right so this is a decimal data type this is a whole number data type so whenever we are trying to work so when as soon as we land up into our data transformation part it is very much important to choose and check the right data type do we really have for each column or not 
okay so choosing the right data type is highly important so if you try to change the data type okay for example if i change this uh, whole number data type into the text format do you really think that it, it works no it will not work it will not work it is a wrong data type so choosing the correct data type is very much important okay choosing the uh, data type is very much important so this is the fifth step now if i would like to talk to you about the last step the very very important step which is choosing the schema okay choosing the schema when we are into this data model part when we are into this data model part so what's happening here is that we have to be very sure that what type of schema are we really using so it is it, it should be always we should make sure that we have to go with the star schema which is the easiest way of creating a relationship in our particular data model part okay so creating a relationship we go with the star schema what is a star schema we have one fact table and all the dimension tables are directly connected with the fact table so star schema we have to uh, use it rather than going with the snowflake schema so that is the one step that every uh, you know, expert in power bi developer or in power bi they usually refer because choosing the star schema really be helpful for us why what is the reason because in this star schema it is very easy for us to create the dax functions and to work on the dax model also and it is easy to write in the star schema when rather than comparing with the other schemas that we have we have snowflake schema we have galaxy schema and so on so these are little bit complicated when we are creating the uh, relationships you know data relationships but using a star schema will be really really will be helpful and it is easy, easy for us also to work and understand for example if you would like to remove the duplicates and all using a star schema it will be really helpful for you so without creating a relationship also you cannot go and directly work on the tables and get the columns from different tables and get it into one visual that is also very difficult you no know, you have to create a relationship but we should make sure that what kind of relationship that are we maintaining either are we maintaining a many to one relationship or are we using the joins or which join or what that also you have to make sure and my another important suggestion apart from all these six important steps that i have discussed with you is that we need to be made very sure that rather than creating one on one okay relationship it is better to merge two tables into one and use it as a one okay rather than using two different tables it is better to use merge query as we have it here in the power query editor we use we should use a merge query to merge more two tables and use it it is best choice okay rather than choosing one on one relationship so these are the different steps and these are the different uh, important uh, uh, points that every uh, individual should have a knowledge on in power bi when you are talking about the optimizing the data model in power bi so thank you for choosing know how academy as your source for it knowledge we are always here to help you to navigate the tech world if you have any questions do not hesitate to reach out it's been a pleasure sharing this information with you stay curious and keep learning